Okay, so today we're going to look at relative extrema and the first and second derivative tests. And what these tests can tell us are whether the function is increasing or decreasing and at what, and at what intervals um, the relative extrema, so the relative minimum and the relative maximum, or mums or mins, multiple, and the concavity of the curve, so concave down or concave up is also what we can look at using these tests. So we're going to start out with the first derivative test. In this first derivative test will tell us uh, increasing, decreasing, and the relative extremum. So the first derivative test is just the first derivative of this function here. So f prime x equals 3x squared minus 12x. And we're going to go ahead and simplify that down to uh, 3x times x minus 4. Okay, so now we're going to get our critical points, and our critical points are the points at which the function uh, does something interesting, whether it, it changes from increasing to decreasing, or does a little law if it goes from positive to positive, or increasing to increasing. And to do that, we set f prime x equal to 0. So 0 equals all that. So we set each portion equal to 0. So our critical points, or CPs, are at x equals 0 and x equals 4. All right, now that we have our critical points, we can set up our slope table. And our slope table is key in, in uh, organizing all of the stuff that we know about this function in order to uh, look at it and pretty much just determine all the different stuff, concavity, increasing, decrease, and the extreme, all that. So because we weren't given a bounds to this equation, we assume that it's negative infinity to positive infinity. So negative infinity is our lowest, lowest bound. And then our next lowest bound is at critical point zero. And then our next would be zero to four. And then four to positive infinity, because that is our greatest bound. So we're going to divvy that up. Okay. So now we're going to determine, you know, the increasing and decreasing parts of our function f prime x. So we just have to pick an arbitrary number in this bound. We're going to use negative 1 because that's simple. And we're going to put it into this part here and this part here. And then determine if that, if each of those values are, are positive or negative. And if it's positive, the function is increasing. If it is negative, the function is decreasing. So negative 1 into 3x is negative. Negative 1 into x minus 4 is also negative. Negative times a negative is positive, so the function is increasing on the interval negative infinity to 0. Okay, so for 0 to 4, we're going to use 1 because that's simple. 3 times 1 is positive. 1 minus 4 is negative. So the function is decreasing on that interval. And then we're going to use, let's just go with 5 for the last one. That's going to be positive, positive. So the function is increasing on that interval. Okay, so what does this tell us about f prime x? So because the function is changing from increasing to decreasing at x equals 0, x equals 0 is actually a relative max. And because the function is changing from decreasing to increasing at x equals 4, x equals 4 is a relative minimum. Okay, so now that we know that, and we know where the function is increasing and decreasing, we can also take it one step farther using the second derivative test. So the second derivative, we're just going to take the derivative of the derivative. So our current f prime x, I'm just going to copy that again over here. So now we're going to take the second derivative. So f double prime x equals 6x minus 12. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the same process as we used with f prime x. And we're going to use these arbitrary values into this to determine if the overall value of f double prime x is positive or negative. If it is positive, once again, we're concaving up. If it is negative, we are concaving down, which is like that. So let's use negative 1. Negative 1 into 6x minus 12. 6 times negative 1 is negative. Minus 12 is negative. So we have concave down here. Um, we're going to use 1, so 6 times 1 is positive, or 6 minus 12 is negative, so that's negative as well, or uh, concave down. 
and we're going to use five and that's going to be overall positive so concaving up so what we know about this function to be true is now we can look at concavity okay so to determine concavity we have to look at both whether the function is increasing and if it is concave up or concave down so in at, from the bounds of negative infinity to zero we know that the function is increasing and concave down so the concavity is going to look something like that on that interval okay let's look at the next interval our function is decreasing and concave down so the concavity is going to look something like that and then on the final um, interval of our function the function is increasing and concave up so it's going to look something like this so that's pretty much just an overview of what we can use with the relative extrema using the first and second derivative tests um, thank you for watching and have fun in calc